the sign to Aleph and the Tav. On the fourth day of creation, God created the sun, the moon, and the stars. And God said that the number one reason why he created the sun, the moon, and the stars was to be for signs. In the Hebrew, that word for signs is oath, spelled Aleph, Bob, Tav. Aleph means first, Bob means and, Tav means last, first and last, Aleph and Tav. That is the meaning of the Hebrew word oath, which is sign. God is literally putting a sign in the heavens over America on April 8th, 2024. On April 8th, 2024, oath will be stamped over America, the olive and the tab, the completion of the heavenly sign, seven years apart with the great American solar eclipse. The great American solar eclipse in 2017 was the first, the annular solar eclipse, October 2023 is the Vav. And on April 8th, 2024, the Tav completes the great American solar eclipse part two. God is giving us heavenly signs. His word in the New Testament tells us in the last day that there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. Here we see the handwriting in the sky. God gave ancient Babylon handwriting on a wall, mini, mini, tekel, you farsi. That very night, Babylon was overtaken by the Medes and the Persians. At the time of the end, before the rapture, God said that he would give us signs so that we could be aware of his imminent return on the clouds. I pray that you know Jesus because the time is short and the days are evil. The only way to escape in the rapture is to be born again. Because if you get left behind, God says he will send a strong delusion, a lie which will encompass aliens and every type of evil deception that the human mind has never even comprehended. For it will be the apocalypse, the worst time in all of human history. Give your life to Jesus Christ so that you can live forever and escape in the rapture. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. And the Bible says you shall be saved. But the time is short and the days are evil. Therefore, the question is, are you ready? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. My people perish for a lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you from being priest for me. Because you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, merciful Heavenly Father. We thank you, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We thank you for another opportunity to serve you with joy and gladness for this is the day that you have made and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. We're going to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit because you have given us a fresh and a new anointing from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet so that our cup runs over with the fullness of the seven spirits of God, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of yod heh vav -Heh, the spirit of the fear of yod heh vav -Heh. Lord God, may you quicken us and may you continue to rain down mercies and grace and blessings in abundance so that we won't even have room enough to receive it, O oh Lord. Because every good and perfect gift comes down from above. 
and because you rain down so much that we can't even receive it and all of it that you have in store for us, we pray that we would continue to pour back out because freely we have received, freely we give. Oh, Lord, how we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, King of Saints. May you teach us right now great and mighty things which we do not know. May you open up our eyes to behold wondrous things out of your word. May you be true, O oh Lord, and every man a liar. Because out of your mouth comes nothing but truth. For your words are life. And you have given us life and life more abundantly. O oh Lord, how we love you. Because you first loved us. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem, and we pray in the name that is above all names, Jesus the Messiah. Amen. Well, hallelujah, saints of God. It's so good to be back with another teaching installment of When the Temple in Heaven is Opened, Everything Will Change. And today, we have a great teaching. I want to go over a new series that I'm going to title, Basic Concepts. Basic Concepts. Amen. Uh, this new series that God put on my heart to do, which is titled Basic Concepts, is going to give us knowledge, right? Because God said, speaking to Israel in Hosea, that his people were perishing because of a lack of knowledge. And so there's nothing new done under the sun. So people today are still perishing for a lack of knowledge. And what's knowledge? Knowledge is information that you learn through education. Right. So you receive knowledge through education. Amen. And because we have the spirit of knowledge, which is one of the seven spirits of God, the Holy Spirit takes the things of Christ, the education, the Bible, the basic instructions before leaving earth, the word of God. He takes the knowledge that we feast upon if we study to show ourselves approved and he makes it real to us by teaching us. Amen. So there should be no reason for any of us who are in the body of Christ to lack knowledge. Amen. There should be no reason if you have the spirit of God, because one of the seven spirits of God is the spirit of knowledge. Amen. But it's sad that, you know, there's lots of Christians that are totally ignorant about the word of God. Right. Because they're lazy. They don't, they don't diligently seek God because God says, unless we come to him by faith. Hallelujah. The Bible says it's impossible to please God without faith for those who come to God must believe that he exists and that he is a what? A rewarder of all those who diligently seek him, right? You see, God gives out recompense. He gives out rewards according as every man's work shall be. So if you're a lazy Christian, well, you're not going to have too much knowledge of who the Holy One of Israel is, right? So uh, you are going to not be endued with all the power that resides within you. Amen. Because you are not feeding your faith with the truth. But if you diligently, right, if you put in effort, amen, if you make it a point, hallelujah, to seek after God, to diligently seek after him, right? Bible study, teachings, right? Uh, coming together amongst the brethren, going to church. If you diligently are pursuing God through prayer, through fasting, through spiritual disciplines, if you are putting in an effort, right, to feed your faith, right, with the word of God, the knowledge that he will reveal to you will overflow. Amen. And you can't help but to tell others that we have a savior who lives. His name is Jesus Christ. Do you know him? And so, Today's basic concept, hallelujah, the education that we're about to receive, which is going to give us knowledge that the Holy Spirit is going to reveal to us through the spirit of knowledge, is going to bolster our faith in a core doctrine, which we're going to get to at the end. And so the basic concept today is the blessing always comes before the curse. Hallelujah. This is a basic concept. This is theology 101. This is milk. Right. It's not even meat. This is milk. This is elementary stuff. And so we need this so that we can grow. Amen. We need to understand the basic concepts so that we can grow so that when it's time to progress to the meat, 
Amen. We're not going to be all fuzzy, right? We're going to be able to digest it. We're not going to swallow hook, line, and sinker every wind of doctrine that comes our way because we understand the basic concepts, right? We understand the basic concepts of God. Amen. And this is a basic concept that God has laid out in his word that the blessing always, the blessing always, 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 always comes before the curse. And so to prove this, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 is going to support this whole doctrine. Because 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 tells us through the Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. Amen. And there's numerous scriptures that say that same verse, right? Because out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word, not some, not most, every word has to be established. So you have to have two or three witnesses to establish a truth. And so what are the, what's the truth that we're going to establish today? Well, it's the basic concept of the blessing always coming before the curse. So me, as an educator, as a teacher of the word of God, I have to give you two or three witnesses to prove this so we can let God be true and every man a liar. Because if I don't have two or three witnesses to establish this truth, well, you could discount what I'm trying to put before you. Amen. And that's how you should test all things. You always have to have two or three witnesses. Right? If you hear something, somebody said this, well, they have to show you two or three witnesses out of the word of God to prove what they're saying is right. Amen. And so I'm going to give you three witnesses. And that's just, you know, the tip of the iceberg. But these three witnesses is enough, amen, to establish this truth of the blessing always coming before the curse. So let's start off in Genesis chapter one. Amen. And Genesis chapter one, the first time that we come across the word bless is in creation, right? Genesis chapter 1, verse 22, go there. In creation, hallelujah, God created the heavens and the earth, right? In six days, and on the seventh day he rested, hallelujah. He created all things by the word of his mouth, the word of God, right? Jesus Christ, amen. And in Genesis chapter 1, verse 22, we come across the word blessed for the first time. Amen. We come across the word blessed for the first time. Turn with me to Genesis chapter 1 verse 22 and we see this here. Amen. Genesis chapter 1 verse 22, we see this. And God blessed them. There it goes. And God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the sea and let birds multiply on the earth. Amen. So he blessed his creation on the fifth day, which was all the creatures in the sea and all the fowls of the air. First time we come across this word blessed is on the fifth day, the fifth day of creation. And on the fifth day of creation, God says the word blessed. That's not all, though. He's going to keep on blessing because the blessing always, always, always comes before the curse. Next time we come across the word blessed is in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, still dealing with creation. Amen. So turn with me to Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, and we see that God blessed us, right? He blessed his creation on the sixth day, which was man and woman, Adam and Eve. Amen. Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Amen. Speaking to those who he made in his image and after his likeness, our first parents, Adam and Eve. God had blessed humanity because all of us were in Adam, right? All of us were in Adam. We received the same blessing. Amen. So blessing continues to appear first. Amen. The blessing always comes before the curse. And then turn with me to Genesis chapter two, verse three, because God is in the blessing business. Amen. God is in the blessing business. Blessed be 
our great God and Savior. Amen. Blessed be the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. He's the Father of all blessings. He's in the blessing business. He is blessed. Right? He's the one from which all blessings come. So the blessing will always come before the curse. We're laying down a basic concept that you have to grasp. Right? So you don't perish for a lack of knowledge. You're receiving the education so that you could have the knowledge, so that you could continue on this narrow path and not be strayed by every wind of doctrine that comes your way that tries to blow you off the narrow path that only a few people find because there's a lot of wolves in sheep's clothing. Right? They, want, they want to kill, steal, and destroy. Right? They want to kill your hope. Right? They want to destroy uh, your joy. Right? And they want to uh, steal your faith. Right? Shipwreckers. But praise be to God that you're steadfast. Right? You're unmovable. You're always abounding in the work of the Lord because your labor is not in vain. Because the power of the Holy Spirit that dwells in you continues to build you up in the inner person. Though your outward person may be perishing. Amen. Because you feast upon the word of God. Amen. Genesis chapter 2 verse 3. The blessing continues. Amen. Genesis chapter 2 verse 3. God says this. Then God blessed. Mm. Then God blessed the seventh day, and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. So God blessed on the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh day of creation. The word blessed appears on the fifth, the sixth, and the seventh day. The blessing always comes before the curse. This is the pattern that we see from creation to revelation. Right From Genesis to Revelation, the blessing will always come before the curse because another basic concept we're going to go through on another teaching is that God doesn't change. Amen. Everything builds upon that foundation of Jesus Christ because no other foundation can any person lay except that which has been laid, which is Jesus Christ. And on his foundation, there's nothing but truth. So everything builds upon everything else that's truth because God is truth, right? And we shall know the truth and the truth will set us free because Jesus Christ is what? He's the way, the truth, and the life, right? No one comes unto the Father except through him. So all we do is talk about truth. The basic concept, this truth, is that the blessing always comes before the curse. So three times in Genesis, right? First two chapters, fifth, sixth, and seventh day, we saw the word blessed. So when does the curse appear? Right? We've established that the blessing has come first. So when does the curse appear? Right? Well, the curse doesn't appear until the fall. Turn with me to Genesis chapter 3. Okay? This is the first time that you come across the word curse in all the Bible. Right? Genesis chapter 3, verse 14. This is the first time that we come across the curse because something has changed, right? The fall has now happened, right? Our first parents, Adam and Eve, disobeyed God, right? And Eve, being the one that was deceived, took from the tree that was forbidden to eat from of knowledge of good and evil, right? And she took and ate because she listened to the contrary voice of that old serpent, right? Called the devil and Satan, that great red dragon, Right, our adversary, the enemy. And she ate from the forbidden tree, took the fruit, ate, gave to her husband, and he also ate, and here we are. Right? But praise be to God, because in Adam all die, but yet in Christ shall all be made alive. Amen. Uh, the first Adam messed us up on a tree. Right. Uh, the second Adam, the last Adam, fixed us up on a tree. <laughs> His name is Jesus Christ. Amen. Just as by one man sin entered into the world and death passed to all men because all have sinned. Yeah. Yet by that one, the righteous one, has life been achieved because he has conquered death through the resurrection of the dead. Right. Because Jesus Christ, who died on the tree, took our sin upon himself as our substitute. Anybody who comes to him as a sinner in need of a savior who's identified in his death because we've been crucified with Christ 
nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but it's Christ who lives in me. Right? We've been identified in his death. Okay. All of us who have been identified in his death, we also will be identified in his resurrection. Amen. Because on the third day after the crucifixion, Jesus Christ came out of the empty tomb, right? He came out of the tomb uh, in a glorified body because it was impossible for the grave to hold him. He got up with all power and he has the keys to both death and hell. And he declares, I am the resurrection and the life. Do you know him? Mm. First time he come across curse in all the Bible, Genesis chapter three, verse 14, speaking to the serpent, right? The curse is always in connection with the serpent, right? The curse is in connection with the fallen one, right? The originator of all sin, right? Because there was a rebellion even before what happened in the Garden of Eden, right? In the angelic realm. We read about it in Isaiah chapter 14, Ezekiel 28, right? Genesis chapter 3, verse 14. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. Hallelujah. First time we come across the word curse in all the Bible is when the fall had taken place and the curse is connected with the serpent. Mm. The basic concept is that the blessing always comes before the curse. We have one witness. Right? We have one witness that has established this truth. Three times <laughs> we came across the word blessed before we came across the word curse. On the fifth, sixth, and seventh day, the word blessed appeared. It wasn't until the fall in the garden that then the curse appeared and it was connected to the serpent. Mm. We have one witness. Let's get a second witness. Second witness, turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 27. Turn with me to Deuteronomy 27. These are, this is the passage where we find, hallelujah, the two mountains, right? Mount Gerizim and Mount Ebal, hallelujah. When the children crossed over into the promised land, when the children of Israel crossed over into the promised land, they were to stand on two mountains, <laughs> the mountain of blessing and the mountain of of cursing. Now look at the order because the order is is everything, right? Because God is a God of order. Let everything be done decently and in order. Amen. And you find this order throughout the Bible, right? When speaking of these two mountains, right? Because the blessing will always come before the curse. Deuteronomy chapter 27, we see this. Moses was given instructions about what the children of Israel were to do when they crossed over into the promised land. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 27, beginning verse 11. And Moses commanded the people on the same day. Here he goes. These shall stand on Mount Gerizim to bless the people. When you have crossed over the Jordan, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Joseph, and Benjamin. So the word blessed appears first. And then what happens? The next verse. The word blessed appeared first in connection with Mount Gerizim. Six tribes were to stand upon Mount Gerizim and bless the people because the blessing always comes first. Blessing always comes before the curse. Has to. God don't change. And then what happens? Well, the next verse, verse 13, then what happens? Well, here comes the curse. And these shall stand on Mount Ebal to curse. Mm. Reuben, Gad, Asher, Zebulon, Dan, and Naphtali. God said, when you go into the promised land, six tribes are going to stand on Mount Gerizim to bless. Right? And then six tribes are going to stand on Mount Ebal to curse. Mm. Second witness. <laughs> In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. The blessing always comes before the curse. We saw it again. But let's get three witnesses. Amen. Amen. Let's get three witnesses. Well, let's go back to the father of faith, right? Let's go to the book of Genesis again, right? Because everything is established at the beginning. God doesn't change. It's always going to be like this throughout Old and New Testament. The blessing will always come before the curse. Let's go to the father of faith, right? Abraham. When God called Abraham, look at it, right? 
The blessing always comes before the curse. Here goes the third witness to establish this truth. Amen. Here comes the third witness to establish this truth. Genesis chapter 12, I'll begin at verse 1. Now the Lord said to Abram, get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you. There it goes. And make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. All right, there it goes. That's not all. Let's go to the, the next verse. Verse 3. I will bless those who bless you. Blessing, 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 over and over again. First, the blessing always comes before the curse. When does the curse appear? Right? And I will curse him who curses you. Right? After God had mentioned bless, blessing, bless, bless. Four times he mentioned bless in regards to Abraham and those who bless Abraham. Right? Four times God mentions blessing in connection with Abraham before he ever says anything about a curse. And the curse comes if you don't bless Abraham. Right? Speaking of the seed of Abraham, right? The seed of the woman that came through Abraham, right? The Messiah, amen, the king of Israel, the God of all the earth shall he be called. Everybody who is of the father of faith, that same seed, right? We're blessed with faithful Abraham, amen, because we've been grafted in, <laughs> hallelujah. We've been grafted in by faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ because of his amazing grace. And we, as the body of Christ, the church, hallelujah, <laughs> are one with our Messiah, the seed of the woman, Jesus Christ. We're blessed, amen. As you can see, we came up, hallelujah, we discovered through education, the knowledge, that the blessing always comes before the curse, which is a basic concept. I saw, I said all that to say this. Well, if you have finally understood this truth or if this has just bolstered your uh, understanding and you've received more knowledge. So now that you're settled. The Bible tells us that there's coming a day called the blessed hope. Turn with me to Titus. Turn with me to Titus chapter two. Turn with me to Titus chapter two. And we see something interesting about the blessing always coming before the curse. Amen. Turn with me to Titus chapter 2. Amen. Titus chapter 2 tells us this in verse, I'll begin at verse 11. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, mm, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. Here it goes. Looking for the blessed hope, there it goes, and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. The blessed hope is the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. How is he going to appear? He's going to appear on a cloud. Right? He's going to appear on a cloud at the time of the rapture when the door to heaven is open. And that will be the blessed hope because the blessing always comes before the curse. This is a basic concept. <laughs> this is a basic concept that is milk, but we need this milk to grow. So we still need the milk. Amen. So that when the meat comes again, we can digest it and we will not be hoodwinked, bamboozled or led astray by somebody that wants to tell you that there's no such thing as a pre-tribulation rapture because the basic concept that the blessing always comes before the curse proves that the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, fulfills that basic concept. Mm. Because what happens if you're not caught up at the time of the blessed hope? Well, let's see the curse now, right? Let's see the curse. Go with me to Isaiah. Amen. Go with me to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 24 is just one place we could go, and we'll see the curse now sent out. Right. We'll see the curse sent out upon everybody who's been left behind, who's broken God's covenant. Right? They haven't been grafted into the new covenant by faith in the name of that is above all names, Jesus Christ. Right? They haven't been grafted in by faith in his name. And so the everlasting covenant is broken. Everybody who's under God's feet at the time of the rapture, they're rebels. Right? They're in rebellion. They're in darkness. 
And God says, if the light that's in you be darkness, how great is that darkness? Well, here it goes. Amen. Impending judgment on the earth. I begin at verse four. The earth mourns and fades away. The world languishes and fades away. The haughty people of the earth languish. The earth is also defiled under its inhabitants because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore, the curse has devoured the earth. Mm. And those who dwell in it are desolate. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are burned and few men left. Curse comes upon everybody who has been left behind because they're in darkness. They weren't ready for the blessed hope. They didn't have the Holy Spirit. They had no oil. And so now they're under God's feet. And God says the curse will devour the whole earth and the whole earth will be burned and few men left. And the only escape is Jesus Christ. I pray you be caught up in the number. Amen. Praise King Jesus. I'm thankful that the Lord led your feet here to sit down at the table and whet your appetite. May you come back next week if the Lord says the same. For more teachings of when the temple in heaven is open, everything will change. If you want further study, come to my YouTube page as you can see on the screen. And if you want to support the ministry, please go to PreachTheLoveOfGod.com to get all your merchandise to be a witness through fashion for the soon coming King, Jesus Christ. Rapture soon. Amen.